Welcome back to podcast. You'll notice Zane and Lizzie aren't here. What's going on? This is weird and different. I don't like it. I know I said podcasts were going to continue as normal and they do still intend to, but I had to fucking do this because this was beautiful. Someone on Tumblr uh, directed me to a forum where people were discussing my last glass of water, Snap, Crackle, Fizzle Pop. And so I found a rare occasion because I don't get to see this all that often. I found a very mixed discussion surrounding uh, the video itself. You know, there are people who agreed with what I was saying. There are people who didn't agree with what I was saying. And there were people who clearly didn't watch the fucking video and were making shit up as they went along. And I don't get to see all that in one place because my comment section tends to be overwhelmingly positive. And the places that are usually negative about me tend to be negative for less specific reasons. <laughs> so there's no way I could do this without calling in the king of just the king of spilling tea. Mr. Sketchy the Changeling. Hey, yo. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty sure like a lot of people on your channel aren't familiar with me, but... For the folks that are, if you follow me on Twitter or Tumblr or even watch my videos, you'll know I am ruthless, to say the least. So we're just going to have fun. We're just going to bang it out. Pause. We're just going to have some fun. Those who don't know, uh, Sketchy takes part in like the weekly patron calls. And there's always like one segment where he'll just pluck out like one YouTube comment that he's gotten that's... Generally from someone who's a lot more salty and ragey and he'll just read it out for us and we'll just have a little we'll just have a little bit of a big old laugh. And so, yeah, that's the thing. Um, the majority of my comments, the majority of the people that comment on my videos, whether they agree with me or not, usually have a lot of things of value to say. Like, I think it's because a lot of my commenter, a lot of my commenters kind of helped me gain a little bit more perspective on some of the views that I've held on episodes in the past. And there have been episodes where I thought one way about it and then somebody in the comment section kind of brought in a new perspective and was like, oh, I didn't see it that way. But, you know, every now and then I would like to say like probably 10 percent of the time, there's always that that one person. Like it's always hard to find a comment like this because they happen so infrequently. But when when I do, whoo. Yeah. So. One time you brought the tea on the uh, on the patron call and it was uh, it was a comment that I posted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was funny because like you read like um that was like I think that was one of the first the first time you ever commented on one of my videos. And I was like, ooh, I got to I got to spill the tea on Lily. She might kick me out, but it's, it'll be worth it. Well, I mean, what was the uh, what was the uh, subject of it's like, I think he said in the video and now to prepare for the essay long comment saying about how they were right about Starlight the whole time. And so I just commented with I was right about Starlight the whole time. Sweet vindication. Yeah, it was um when I did my my section on uh, to change a changeling. I was talking about how um I normally defend Starlight, especially in season six. But in that episode, there was just no defending her and as much as it hurt i was like girl i can't defend you on this and now i gotta prepare for all the people telling me they were right about starlight all along and then when you commented because i said that they that they were going to be essay long comments i started grading lily's comment like i was an english teacher and i was like this comment does not include a works cited page in mla format i'm deducting a letter grade <laughs> it's just i think the only response i made was this is bullshit yep <laughs> it was like gabriel iglesias son <sighs> bless you you love gabriel iglesias just bless you oh who doesn't love gabriel iglesias find me someone who doesn't love gabriel iglesias and i will put and i will show you the president of the united states <laughs> So, okay, how many posts did I save? I didn't save the ones that were, like, just sort of, like, junk posts of people just kind of, like, posting reaction gifs to each other. Yeah, um, there are about 30 total, and there was a fair mix of, there was an even mix of, like, people that agreed with you, people that reasonably disagreed with you, and then the people that were just, oh my god, she's terrible. And then toward the end, a fucking neo-Nazi jumps in and starts screaming their goddamn head oh, off. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it was beautiful. We'll, we'll get to, girl, we'll get to that. This one's number 46. Oh, crap. Number one was overwritten. Shit. <laughs> uh, I still have it. I have the No, no, it, 
No, I mean, it's like number one was overwritten while I was saving them. Ah, oh, damn. Okay, um, I don't know if you have the folder, so here's the actual number one, which was just like, yeah, the actual, no, the actual first one, which was just like a link to the post. And this one's great because they specifically point out later on that they didn't actually watch the video. All right, so popping open number one, and this one's apparently subscribed to me, by the way, and this was hilarious. So I was looking at my subscriptions and saw that Lily Pete made a video about Tempest. Raise up your pitchforks and torches, though what do you think of her video? And we go to the second one. The second one is pretty much the best one. People still link to Lily Pete. Excuse me, King Moriarty. But I am the queen. I'm the queen of this place. And the third one is where it's is where it starts. I think uh, this guy. I think you said you you know this guy. Um, let's see. Um, I don't. I've seen their name around fan fiction before. Um, it's been a it's been a hot minute since I've been on fan fiction, mind you. I just I I recognize the name and the icon. As far as the person themselves, I don't really know how they are, but I recognize the name for sure. Uh, th th this is the one who, who gets who gets their ass handed to them within the thread itself the most. Slight problem with Lily's point here. Tempest, she wasn't exactly a sympathetic character from the start. It was only after Open Up Your Eyes did it become that. And besides, this is a show based on the concept of friendship being magic. I think it's L Lily's brain for a moment there. Okay, so here's my problem with this. First off, like... Like, yeah, the show is based on the concept of friendship being magic. But the thing is, what about Chrysalis? What about Sombra? What about T-Rex? What about... Po uh, not, not Pony of Shadows. Uh, the Storm King. The Storm King in the same movie. He dies. Yeah. And, he um, dies in the same movie. And in the credits, they dance on his dead body. Spoilers. Um. <laughs> so, yeah. And then um, since she never... She just kind of fucked off and went somewhere i don't know maybe she lost her job filed for unemployment i don't know but not every villain has gotten has gotten a redemption it's just that the point of the video was that not that villain redemption should be done away with entirely but that it's been done so often and with the same kind of with the same flavor of redemption with the same whole yeah people were mean to me when i was a kid and now I'm going ape shit. So, you know, it kind of misses the whole point of what you were trying to say. It doesn't just miss the whole point. It even gets it wrong. Uh, it's like slight problem with Lily's point. Tempest wasn't exactly a sympathetic, sympathetic character from the start. It was only after open up your eyes. Did she become that? I explicitly said that in the glass of water video itself. Throughout the second act of the film, I was admittedly getting rather tired of her shtick and wanted the film to do more with her. Then comes the third act and I immediately regretted that because we got another Philly Stob story of one bad thing happened in my childhood and I've been a brooding asshole ever since. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like... Um, even if she wasn't a sympathetic character from the start, again, that wasn't the point. The point was the whole thing about her being, having that snapshot redemption. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out which video they watched. Like, like, okay, maybe I have to watch it backwards and see if there was some hidden message in there that you're trying to pull over my head, but... No, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, like, uh, later on as we go through, but th this is the big point, and he does this, like, three more times. He points out that Tempest isn't a sympathetic character until, like, the third act of the movie, and that that's a problem with my point. But in the video itself, I explicitly said, throughout the entire second act of the movie, I was wanting the, the film to do more with Tempest, other than just show up, beat someone up, make a face, exit stage right, and then I regretted it once Open Up Your Eyes happened. The thing they point out being a problem with my point was never even present in the video. Yeah. So, let's, let's, what's the next one? Um, okay, so this next one says, from only viewing this video, I think Lily Pete is just lacking in the brain department. Well, that's just a non sequitur, so there's not really much to gain from that. I mean, judging from the downvotes, I mean, it seems that some people agree. I get, I, I find this, I find this in my YouTube. I shit on fan fiction a lot, but their for, but their, their, their group forums tend to be much more, much better managed. I shit on fan fiction into on the basis of the fact of what gets onto that freaking featured box. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I, I was a lot more active on fan fiction prior to my days on YouTube, and I enjoyed um the forums, especially like. 
because um depending on which group you're in uh the mods are really good at um at uh policing their forums and i gotta give kudos to them for that but you know there's always that 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 odd one out <laughs> i get these kind of comments a lot and these are the ones that i tend to just uh either delete or if approval is on i just won't approve them or i'll just delete them anyway these are the ones that will just say something along the lines of based on watching this video i've concluded that you're wrong and then nothing else and i'm just looking at it like is it, did you did you really feel the need to post this is that it and it's just well this is why i filter comments in the first place delete <laughs> When people ask, why why do you filter your comments? This, this right here, what you're looking at right now, this is why I filter my comments. It's like, if you're going to disagree with me, like, the thing is, I would love to know why. Because that can, that can start a discussion, that can start a dialogue. There's an actual conversation that can be had. But when you just like, uh... I don't like this. I don't, I don't, dis I don't agree. It's like, it's like the downvote button. It's like clicking the downvote button at all. Like, that's the thing. Just click the download, the download, downvote button. Well, I mean, it's the same problem with the downvote button. It's like the, the like and dislike system is completely worthless entirely. It's like, oh, well, it'll tell you what people thought about the video. It really doesn't. It's just a flat. I like this or I didn't like it. It doesn't tell you why any of that happened. Didn't YouTube have used to have like a one to five star rating system uh, once upon a time? Yeah, but be, but I mean, any any rating system that doesn't require a comment is a rate is like completely useless to any creator. I've said this to so many like YouTube. Uh, so like so many new YouTubers who ask me for advice. Uh, that, like, it's very easy to get wrapped up in the number of likes and dislikes a video has. It is le it, it is worth less than nothing. Yeah, that, that's kind of something that I had to really get out of my head the first year I did YouTube. Because I remember being so caught up in the number of likes and dislikes. And I kind of just neglected the, the feedback I was getting in the comments. And that's where, like, the real... Because, like I said, like, most of the people in my comments section are awesome so you know it was kind of a disservice to them to kind of prioritize the like and dislike ratio over them you want an even better metric uh it's it's buried in the analytics you have to specifically look for it it's called audience retention oh yeah i've, I've seen that it's this little line graph and it measures every single viewer and it measures based on their watch behavior. So if they skip something, if people are consistently skipping something, you'll see little valleys. And if they're consistently replaying something, you'll see little hills. I had a joke about Fim Fiction's content at the start of my top five of season five. And Lizzie told me that people would, would hate it. It was replayed so much. Wow. <laughs> it was replayed so much, so often. It was great. People loved it. People love that joke. Yeah, it, it's um, it's crazy how you um, you put something in a video and when you, you expect people to be like, oh, they're going to hate this. And then they end up loving it. So going into the next one, we've got this one. It's like, someone show this vid to the abyss. I'd like to see his reaction. I singled this out because it's it's almost like it's they're baiting someone. They're baiting someone who they who they it's like they absolutely know is going to hate the video. And what happened when the abyss actually came in was beautiful. Oh, wow. It was beautiful. It wasn't tea. The person agreed with me and it pissed off so many of them. Little, little did they know. Uh, this guy comes back with, oh, too arrogant to tell people flame warring. I'll grab the popcorn. This guy derailed the discussion twice to argue about whether or not, uh, whether or not the abyss was arrogant, but they just like, it actually derailed in an entire method. And I should give you like the full link, uh, like when we're done with this, but just trying to quantify what makes uh, a person arrogant. It's funny watching someone try to quantify something that doesn't actually matter. That's always been something that kind of bothered me whenever, like, um, I would try to have a discussion with someone, whether it's online or offline, where we're trying, well, like, we're, well, I'm trying at least to stick to the point of the discussion, but then it kind of derails into talking about, um, oh, how I present my opinion or, or, um, j j just like, semantics on wording and stuff like that instead of what's actually a, instead of the actual material that's being discussed and it's like you keep moving the goalpost and and distracting from the point of the conversation like if you don't have anything to add just say you don't have anything to add um well that's that's a deflection tactic they know they can't argue with you on like the actual quality of something you're critiquing 
So they just change the subject to your tone. And if they can continuously control the conversation like that, then, uh, and keep it on something that the two of you will never agree on, then the debate just becomes an endurance test. Yeah, and then, like, a lot of people end up playing right into those people's hands because, you know, as they should, they get frustrated by the fact that they're distracted from the point, and then that frustration is used against them, and then the person they're arguing with is like, see, you can't, you can't control yourself, what's wrong with you, like... It, you end up playing right into their hands. This is why, I once again, I always tell people, filter your comments. If you see a stupid comment, just delete it. People don't want to do that because the internet has sort of created this environment where deleting a comment or just leaving an argument is like conceding defeat. It's like, oh, you won't argue with me. That means I win. And it takes a lot of mental fortitude to just say, all right, have that victory. If it means so much to you, I'm going to be over here enjoying life. Yeah, it's something that I've been trying to... Like, one thing that I absolutely don't tolerate in my comments is if whether... Like, if two people are having a discussion, or two or more people, whether I'm in the, whether, whether I'm in the discussion or not, and someone starts, like, um, getting very hostile to another person, like, that's where i like, okay, you, you, you can't be here anymore. Because I remember a comic review I posted. Um, it was for the Rainbow Dash and Soren comic that came out around earlier this year. And there was this one person who replied to every single person that said something along the lines of, I like Rainbow Dash and Soren in this comic. And then just made it about like, oh, why are you shipping them together? Like, like one of those people. Oh, Ink Rose showed up in your comment section? Girl, don't start. I am starting. I am so starting. No, I am so no. starting. It was, it was some some other dude. And like um then they started getting to the point where they like they were like throwing insults and telling people to kill themselves and I was like no, mm-mm, no. I'm shutting that down. I'm telling you to stop once. Keep going, you're gone. And they kept going, so you know, I was like, you know what? Bye. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. And that's the thing. Like, say whatever you want about me, but don't come for my fans like that. Don't, don't, like, go after the people that are just trying to, you know, have a discussion about something and then just lay into them like that. I don't tolerate that, period. Okay. Moving on to the next one. Even if she did have a valid point in there somewhere, her lack of like... Sorry, I didn't do that voice right. Even if she did have a valid point in there somewhere, her lack of likability, non-stop outrage, and refusal to acknowledge any kind of counterpoint made it impossible to see. Now, here's a game that all of you can play at home, but I'm going to give specifically to you, Sketchy. What the fuck are they even saying? That, that's the thing, because I saw, I saw this comment when you sent it to me, and I stopped... Like, I looked at each point. It was like, okay, lack of likability. Okay, that's subjective, whether someone's likable or not. So I can't really argue with that. Uh, nonstop, nonstop outrage. Outrage where? Because, like, I think back to some of the videos you've made. And the only video I can remember where you got, like, like legitimately angry was Discord Princess maybe bug spray uh discord princess and bismuth as usual right i forgot about bismuth as usual okay so yeah so i'm like non-stop outrage okay that's just flat out not true and then refusal to acknowledge any kind of counterpoint so i'm wondering do they mean a counterpoint to what to your argument or your own counterpoint because it's like the thing is, when you make an argument, yeah, you can acknowledge a counterpoint just to anticipate like a response and say, okay, if you guys are going to say this, well, here's my defense for that. But it's like, um, you did though, because you acknowledged like that, you know, some people would like it. But then you gave your explanation as to why it didn't work for you. Well, this comes up a little later on in the uh, in the same thread, like this this whole thing about counterpoints. But as it's put right here, and this goes right there with like with lack of likability, is that 
this is a conclusion with no content. I have no idea what this person is even trying to say. Like, if I were looking to this for feedback, it would be completely useless to me. Now, the nonstop outrage, I only have a hypothesis for, or at least a few hypotheses. I mean, the 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 obvious first answer is that because I'm being critical, some people will just always interpret, criti- uh, be, you know, like a critical tone as outrage that that's the culture we live in that's it's the it's the outrage over outrage culture where even mild complaints is viewed as someone being uh, hypersensitive and just throwing all their toys out of the pram that's happened to me a couple of times like in where i i remember be i forgot what episode it was but i remember when i was doing a review on it and there were points about the episode that i was very critical of I think it was the the um the times they are a changeling. I was very critical about how the episode ended, but despite that, I really enjoyed the episode and it got an honorable mention on my top and bottom five of season six. And yet I still got a couple people asking me why I didn't like the episode. And I'm like, did you guys even watch my review or the top five? Because I like the episode. There's this really binary attitude fandoms will often have in that you either love something unconditionally or you absolutely hate it. You can see this in how they react to review scores. If uh, a video game review gets a score less than a perfect 10, if a video game people love, like a Legend of Zelda game, get a 9 out of 10, people view that as a terrible score. In, In video games in general, like a 7 out of 10 is viewed as a negative score, which is... Which only makes sense to someone who is high on quaaludes. And that's the thing. I used to be a part of that whole mindset. I remember when that infamous uh, IGN review of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out. And I like I was 17 at the time. And I got like bothered about it because I was like, oh, why they rate it so low? But like looking back on it, and it's it's like... It's a 7 out of 10. That's pretty damn good. Isn't that the one where uh, everyone flipped out because one of their negative points was too much water? Yeah. I mean, have you guys played Ruby and Sapphire? IGN is clearly Team Magma in disguise. Hello? You know, it's like... Team Magma's the best team anyway, so I don't know why we're going after IGN like that to begin with. I mean, I got it. I got it, and I haven't played Pokemon in years. You could tell by the way IG- IGN's color is red. The signs were obvious. IGN's just fucking with people at this point. That, I never got why people got so upset. At, get so upset at IGN all the time. Like they make some shitty reviews. It's a it's a meme. They make some shitty reviews, but the thing is, those are those specific reviewers, not the company as a whole. Like, come on, people. It, it, it's a meme. It's like Family Guy is terrible, or The Big Bang Theory is the worst thing on television. Even though I haven't watched more than five episodes of it, it's just the internet believes it. And so people just bandwagon onto it. But back going, circling back to like nonstop outrage, I have noticed even just looking over my own videos is that some people can get the impression that I'm angry by virtue of just how I deliver my lines. Because I deliver my lines in a very loud, direct, clear voice just because I was always taught uh, to do that. Whereas a lot of other people in the analysis community tend to almost sort of whisper into their mic or they have this really weak sounding audio which was something I explicitly set out not to do, so I speak very loudly and clearly into the microphone. Yeah, I kind of had that same kind of feedback too because with me, um, I have a lot of bass in my voice, so my voice is just na- my voice just naturally has that bass in it to where anything I say um, sounds like, um, like firm, you know? So I've been, I remember getting comments saying that I sound very strict when I talk, or, uh, or even there was there's this one person that said I had a monotone and I was like, bitch, where? Uh, combining that with the relatively fast way I deliver a lot of my scripts, it's very easy for someone who is dishonest. And this is the important part, dishonest or just lazy to come across to come off with the tone of, oh, you're just angry at everything, even though you could very easily just pay even slightly more attention to what I'm doing. And you'll very clearly tell that I'm often just speaking rather neutrally. But because it's loud and it's a relatively sharp tone, because that's that's how you're supposed to speak into a microphone. Um, people just it's very easy for someone who wants to to just jump onto nonstop outrage. It's one of the reasons uh, you'll notice that a lot of the people um, or well, not a lot. Uh, some of the people who want to be a little slipperier with uh, when they want to pile on the rumors about me, they'll oftentimes speak in a really soft and 
almost NPR-esque tone like this. Yeah, I can't really do that. Because, like, with me, like, um, I went to school with a lot of people that were into audio. Because, like, there was a mix of, like, a bunch of different, like, art fields. And um, I ended up making friends with a lot of people in the audio department. And they gave me a lot of tips and tricks on, like, microphones, line delivery, and all that stuff. And it's like, you know, they told me for the type of work that I do, the way I deliver my lines is um, most likely the best way rather than the more the more slippery tone that you would describe. Welcome to NPR, a show where we talk very softly and right into the mic. You hear that? I'm whispering right in your ear. I'm right in your ear, buzz, 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 buzz. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people in the Brony community do that. They'll talk either, to, uh, they'll talk far away from their mic, they'll talk in their normal speaking voice, they won't talk in anything uh, approximating a broadcast voice. This is one of the reasons why I don't showcase my vocal training, because I tried that, and when uh, combined with all the factors involved in my recording, uh, the results of my more feminine vocal training just won't come through. I have to stick with this loud, deeper register. Yeah, my recording voice is a bit different than my more conversational voice, especially because when I'm more candid and unscripted, I stutter and trip over myself like a lot, especially like. When I'm in the middle of a sentence and I have an idea of what I want to say, but then I suddenly change it in the middle of the sentence. And then when that happens, I start stuttering until I form that new end of the sentence. And it's like, okay, now I can continue. But when I'm scripted, I don't need to do that. So my approach is a lot more direct and there are a lot less pauses in my speech. Yeah, we've heard each other on the patron call at like... Like, I've heard you on the patron, the, you on the patron call and you in a video are two very, very different sounds, and you've probably heard, the, you've heard the same effect from me, probably. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I've had people there, like, we'd have a, we'll have a new patron come in, and they'll take part in the patron call, and almost every time, it happens almost every freaking time, it's someone will just say, you on the patron call and you in a video is like night and day. Holy shit. I've had people tell me that on streams before. Yeah, I've had people say that on streams as well. Like like on streams, I don't have to have that same. Like, I don't give a shit about audio quality on streams because I can't I can't do equalization. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like uh, I'm just being I'm just a lot more relaxed and laid back. And I do things like just grin wildly and start clapping when something awesome happens. Like when I was playing Shadow of War and that like bard orc showed up. We spent a long time on this one. Yeah. So what was the next one? Um. Oh, okay. So this next one says, yeah, I honestly stopped watching at the two minute mark since I could tell she was not going to like the character and going to be like that for the rest of the video. Well, I... This was great. <laughs> the person who posted the video on the forum did not finish watching the fucking video. That's fucking great. Like, I've seen a lot of people discussing a video on a forum and, like, completely ignore and, like, just not watch the video at all. Rarely has it been the original poster in question. And that just encourages people to not watch the video because it's like, oh, the OP didn't watch it, then why should I watch it? And it's like, no, boo-boo, no, no. I mean, Glass of Water can be long. Like, they can be upwards of, like, 12 to 16 minutes long, but... Come the fuck on. If you're going to take part in a discussion, this was posted in the Tempest Shadow Fim Fiction group, by the way. Uh, f- come the fuck on. Like, pay the fuck attention to what it is you're fucking watching, you fucking weirdo. Like, I won't lie. There have been times where I've had to rewatch a video just to make sure I got everything. Because, like, I remember watching You're Wrong and That's Okay. And I remember not really getting the point the first time I watched it. And I don't know if that might have been affected by the fact that I was featured in the video or whatever, but I was like, you know what? Let me go back and watch it again now that I've like I've watched it the first the first time. So this is just material I've already watched being repeated to me. And that's the thing. Sometimes videos take a second, a second or even a third watch to really understand and, and get, you know, like that's what like if. If people who review episodes watch the episodes more than once, then why is why isn't it the same for discussion videos? You know? Yeah, I I think I actually remember like you were featured in the video, but it was like as I was editing it, I actually told you on Discord that I was putting you in the video. Yeah. And I remember after the video came out, somebody had um, contacted me and said, 
I heard that you didn't, I heard that you didn't like the fact that you were featured in the video and I wanted to, to hear your thoughts on it. And I was like, w uh, from who? Because I never made any public statements about my feature in the video, except in the comments of that video where I said that I didn't mind being used there because it was an old video that I made when I was a teenager that doesn't reflect my current work. So it's like it had zero effect on me. So I'm just wondering where this person had heard that I didn't like my my use the use of my character in the video it was like you were what? asked a loaded question that that that's what happened you were asked a loaded question uh next one is the same person who was talking about um uh non-stop outrage oh then you missed the six minute rant about villain reformation and why she thinks the pony of shadows starlight and princess luna are all horrible wastes of characters the thing is you only said that two of those two of those three characters that they listed were wastes of characters i i know that I know that you've expressed your disappointment with Luna, like the, with the way she's used in the in the show. But wasn't that because you liked her and you wanted her to be used better? I think Luna could be one of the best characters in the show if Hasbro had any interest in making her that kind of character. I like a lot of things about Luna, but I hate how she's only ever dragged out to continue this pity party for herself. Or to just make bronies cream their pants and then exit stage right. It's something that I've gotten continuously frustrated with. And I remember one of the videos I made, um, like this was like late 2015. It was, the I think the title was, Does Princess Luna Get Too Much Love? And I posed it as a question just so I could get people to click on the video. Because I said, I say in the beginning of the episode that yes, that, that yes she does. Beca and then the rest of the video was explaining why I felt that way. And that that's the thing. And, and the majority of people got it. It's like, I like Princess Luna, but I think she can be used a lot better than she is because it's like, it doesn't matter if it's the show or the comics or even like the, the chapter books. They just seem to have this compulsive need to bring up her past every time she's used. And because of that, in the, in the cases where... It actually works. The, the well has already been poisoned by all the times that it didn't work and it wasn't necessary. So it's like I can't even appreciate this as much as I could because all the other times you fucked it up spoiled it for me. Additionally, I mean, Starlight's basically just been mangled from the moment she came in. She's came in. She's a terrible villain, had a terrible reformation and has been a terrible character. She's just terrible. And I, I am convinced that the only reason she is still in the show is out of stubbornness because Hasbro knows that she is the base breaking character and just keeps her in the show for spite. I can kind of see that in season seven. Like I was I was on the I was on the Starlight def defense train in season six. I still like her as a character in season seven because I can see I can see where she can be a good character. She she makes a good straight mare to Trixie. Like th seeing those two together is always a good is always a good laugh. All bottled up is one of my favorites of the season not sure if it's top five but it's definitely one of my favorites because i just love the chemistry that those two have together so starlight can be used well it's just that in cases like to change a changeling where she's just put there for the sake of being put there and it's like come on guys you know she you she already has her place why why put her where she doesn't belong you already have a good, like, for me, you already have a good thing going with her and Trixie. Why, why, like, push that more than you need to? And then there was the Pony of Shadows, who was the subject of that rant about villain reformations, in that they made the most deliciously cartoonish Pony of Darkness. They made the most edgy OC who ever edged his way out of an edge concert while edging. Oh, God, I peaked my microphone laughing. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so staying in. I exhaled, and the and the air went straight into my mic. That is staying in. That is no. totally staying in in the editing. Oh god! But anyway, they made they made some mutant hybrid between Xavius, Xehanort, and Reaper. I'm ashamed. I, I'm sad. I didn't have like a third X villain. I know one of those three characters. Um, so 
Xavius, Xehanort, and Reaper. They just mashed the three of them together and made this most deliciously evil, dark OC type of thing. And then they did the exact same thing they did with Starlight Glimmer. And I was like, what? What the fuck? I remember watching this episode with uh, one of my friends from college. Um, it was me, him, and his girlfriend. We were watching it. And as as that whole scene where they were talking it out with him, we were all just like talking to the screen like, no, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Because it's like we had we had discussed it prior to the episode how the, the thing is, because we, we had discussed it prior to the episode that we were kind we were kind of hoping that they take a break from the reformations for a while. Give that give that uh, story thread a, a, a t- some time to rest. Like maybe for one or two seasons and then, and then try it again. But then as it was happening in the season seven finale, we were just like visibly upset. And I remember and like I'm still trying to write down my uh my review for that episode when I do my final roundup on it. And it's just like, you know, I just find it very fitting that the initials for Pony of Shadows are the same initials for a piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> oh, I what mean, a piece of shit. If that's not a sign, I don't know what is. Oh, it's it's got to be a sign of something. Absolutely. It's it's, it's so... Uh, just... I mean, if, if you're going to do the Reformation, why would you go to all this effort to do the Pony of Shadows? Why would you make a literal creature of darkness whose voice acting is, without the power of Pernhenge? Someone who sounds like Eric Idle had a had a weird anal baby with Tim Curry. Well, that was a very um interesting visual. But yeah, carry on. This this guy looks like Lord Voldemort had angry sex with a dark rye. And just why? Why I mean, look, I I I get that you really like reformations, but why this of all things? Cuz this cuz like with the way it was built up, it looked like Sombra 2.0 where he had a he had a more dramatic build up than Sombra so i was thinking that he was going to have an even more dramatic end because like he he had like a very inky aesthetic to him so i thought he was just going to explode and there would just be black shit everywhere and then spike would joke about having to clean it up well i have noticed um this is interesting is that it's only ever the ponies that get reformed if the villain is any other kind of creature it will not get reformed like with the exception of of um the changelings besides chrysalis the changelings are still rather pony-esque though and i'm like discord is explicitly said to have the head of a pony if it's a pony or if it's like whatever the pony equivalent of humanoid is if it's that it can get reformed if it's a monster it won't get reformed well that makes me scared for chrysalis um i i i i I hope they won't they probably will but i hope i hope they don't I hope they don't reform Chrysalis. I hope, I hope above all hopes that they don't do it because it's like Chrysalis is my favorite villain, obviously. And the thing is, now that they've been doing the reformations so many times, every time they bring back Chrysalis, I get scared instead of excited like I should be because now instead of like, oh, Chrysalis is coming back. Let's see what she does this time. It's, oh shit, Chrysalis is, Chrysalis is coming that, coming back. That means that she might be reformed. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, watch. They, they'll totally reform Chrysalis, and it'll be Starlight who talks her off the mountain. Girl, no. I want to sleep well tonight. Don't do this to me. Well, moving on. The Abyss comes in. It says, anyone who bashes Tempest for minutes on end is made of pure evil slash sarcasm. Note that they had to edit it to say that the slash S meant sarcasm. So I'm assuming that the people who re- who followed up on this took this completely at face value maybe but anyway the the abyss who who has been hyped up so far like it, it has been like hyped up it's like someone show this to the abyss Ooh, two arrogant people flame warning this will be great and says to one of the previous ones if you stopped watching at the two minute mark why did you ask if you could share it on a forum of mine did you mean discord and then another one comes in it's like lily is right just like just just giving the same sort of short form responses and then finally those down votes make me sad oh yeah well, I mean, it is rather decidedly mixed. And how exactly 
and I'm just gonna read this like Duke Amiel de Hardcore. And how exactly is she right? A good counter- a good argument would offer counterpoints, and Lily does none of that here. Instead, the video just goes on bashing Tempest and pretty much every other villain without explaining why they're bad villains, or offering any insight in as to their redeeming points. It's like an essay prompt on a test. You have to look at both sides of the argument. Lily doesn't offer any good counterpoints. This gets torn apart by people later on, but the best part is that I do offer a counterpoint in the video. I explicitly highlight a moment in the film that if they'd capitalized it would have been a much better antagonist, and that is uh, when Tempest talks about how the equestrians are wasting their magic on parties and, you know, sort of building off that into the whole disability thing, which the film doesn't do. The sad part is that Tempest has a single line that gives off a much better idea for her as a villain when she remarks on how Equestria has so much magic surrounding it and the Equestrians are wasting it on parties. This sort of genuine bitterness is magnified by the fact that Tempest's horn is broken, so she sees them as taking magic for granted and don't understand what it's like to have it taken from you. The best part of this idea is that it isn't loaded with story holes. The big thing about Tempest is that she was ostracized by other kids for her unstable magic once. What this implies is that she never saw a doctor about her unstable magic. You remember how in the crystalling, Sunburst had the solutions to not only fixing the crystal heart, but also reining in Flurry Heart's unstable magic? The way in which he so matter-of-factly pulled those solutions out of his saddlebags immediately after being told about them implied that they were common knowledge. This was the first Alicorn baby to be born, so the spell had to be designed for something. Even at the time, I said that the answer to the question was probably broken horns. Here comes someone with a broken horn who has clearly never been to a doctor. I spend a good deal a time on that, that it, like in the script, it was an entire page unto itself. It was just ignored by this guy. He just completely forgot it was there. Just took away that very important part of the video of the video that I spent a good deal of time making sure I had because it's my own policy about critique. And then just this guy just erased it entirely and replaced it with you're just bashing Tempest. And that's the thing. You've been. Oh, yeah, you've been. um explaining why you because like every time you say something about tempest it's always followed up with a reason as to why it didn't work especially like you you i think you had a segment on like um the musical number alone explaining why it doesn't work because it um correct me if i'm wrong here it implies that that tempest was only ostracized by her friends once and that was all she needed. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the musical number. This is this is kind of the problem with Tempest in that an important part of her story is something that should be an entire act of the movie is glossed over in a single musical number. And that's it. And it's like, well, was this the only time this happened, or did it happen more other uh, like other times after that? We don't know, and the film has absolutely no interest in telling you. So we have to take it at face value and say that it really was a case of two kids were mean to me once. So my name is not important. Yeah, because like lyrically, you like when it comes to like writing lyrics for a song, it's kind of hard to to go into the specifics of that. So if you're if you're going to explain somebody's motivations, it shouldn't be in a musical number, and it should be in um it, it sh the musical number should be an accent to an already explained motivation. Because for example, like Hellfire in Hunchback of Notre Dame, um. By the time that song happens, we already know why Frollo is the way he is and why he's trying, he's so against the <laughs> but it like, Hellfire doesn't introduce it to us. It enhances his motivation. It gives us a little more depth into it instead of uh, solely shouldering the responsibility of explaining every single point of his motivation. Like, it's not the beginning and end. It's a part of a bigger whole. So this was a very critical part of the, of the video that, you know, I've, I've said many, many times is an important thing to do in any aspect of critique, um, which is to basically say, like, if you're going to if you're going to highlight why something is bad, you also have to then proceed to do it better. Just just as as an example, to basically get through to the casual viewer who might be watching why it was bad by contrasting it with why with how it could have been better. It's just a good habit to get into. I do that in this video. This guy here completely ignored it. 
It just completely ignored it because it didn't suit him. Uh, because it didn't suit the uh, the uh, the foo strategy of just claim someone is just bashing and then just move on from there. Bashing, you know, you're just you're just hating on Tempest for no reason, for no reason. You're just doing it to be spiteful. Uh, no, here are all my reasons. Here is all my reasons detailed in like an eight page script. Oh, you're just bashing stubbornness. That's all. That's all. That's what this right is right here. Stubbornness. And they will willfully ignore anything that doesn't uh, that that doesn't support their stubbornness. The very next one goes on to uh, like it highlights in just a very shorter way what I just said. She does offer counterpoints. The fact that a lot of people of unknown fandoms are so uh, I think they meant quick in this in this part. The fact that uh, yeah, the fact that a lot of people of, of unknown fandoms are just so quick quick uh, to just down anyone with an actual opinion, make any argument about her and her subject matter flaws. She's just a YouTube doing her thing, but yeah, no, we all have to be hateful about anything that isn't popular. Now that I explained your problem, you can work to being less hateful of her. I will take it will take time, but I believe in you. This got two down votes, and I can only assume one of them was from the person they were responding to. I just love that they they accented it with the rarity wink. Like it was the perfect like round of applause. Bravo. Bravo. Yes, yes. Just, just bravo. Bravo, you. Yes. Bravo, you, commenter, whose name I have to blo- I, will, I have to block out, but we'll probably forget to. He's like, and yet I saw none of that offering counterpoints in the video. Of course, we just, we just, uh, we just highlighted here. I did, and this guy's fucking ignoring it. Someone just explained it to them, though. Like, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, the stupid. Oh, the stupid. It hurts. It hurts. Uh, this was where the abyss, uh, talks about, this is where the, uh, this is where the thing about arrogant goes off. Like for the next two, 10, 11, I kept a hold of it cause I was, I was thinking we might do something with it, but I can't think of anything. But, but, uh, this, this guy here who I'm just going to call derail, just derails the whole argument into like whether or not about who is more arrogant as if it matters. And then if we go to 12. From the argument that Lily was making, yeah, they're definitely right. Hasro makes a villain and then reforms them, all the main villains except for Chrysalis, though she might be reformed in later seasons, or kills them off. They've set a pattern now so that whenever a new villain is introduced, we know there's a very high chance of them being reformed. Where's the fun in that? The only villain we have left is Chrysalis, and with the way things are heading, she too might very well get reformed, though I pray that never happens. Me too, brother. And then it's like a paragraph of talking about how great Tempest is uh, supposedly is. More just talking about how Tempest is more of... A vector for Twilight's development, which I guess is interesting, but I mean, we could do that with anyone else, really. We, we, I mean, we could, we could do that without having Tempest be such a, a waste of time. And it's kind of unfair to the character being used because it kind, it kind of objectifies them to where it's like, oh, we're just using you to develop this other character instead of making you a fully fleshed out character in your own right. So number thirteen. It's- Personally, I feel like reforming villains is honestly the best option here. First of all, MLP uh, kind of has a mess- message to send to its intended audience, and characters transforming from evil to good through friendship does a pretty good job of that. So what's the alternative? Keep a villain so we deal with the same villain over and over again? That would probably get a lot more boring than bringing in new ones. This is, again, another person who not only rewrites my argument to be, e- to be easier for them to, uh, for them to disagree with, but also engages what I like to call pendulum swinging, where the alternative, the only alternative to the thing they like is the exact opposite of the thing they like in the most extreme sense. Of course, the crux of the major point of my, the major point I was, the problem I have with, with, uh, with reforming villains is that it's done in the exact same way each time. And the way in which they do it is pretty bad. Yeah. It's like, um, I remember when they tried to re- re- redeem Sombra in the comics and it, it went, it was going so well until the very end where they decided it. Cause like, like short version is that he realizes that shadow magic doesn't have to be evil and he uses it to, um, to ward off the threat and he chooses to sacrifice himself and, you know, pay for his crimes and just die. And then all of a sudden he's brought back to life by the power of love. And I'm like, why didn't you just let him die? And then when it comes to the whole point that this person made about MLP has a message to send to his target audience, let, 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 let's roll with that. Let, let's say that, okay, they want to send a message to their target, target audience. The thing is, MLP has, has never shied away from teaching more complex lessons to kids. So 
wouldn't a very appropriate lesson for MLP to teach kids would be sometimes you can't be friends with everyone. Sometimes people don't want your friendship and trying to to continuously reach out to be friends with someone that is actively refusing your friendship is only going to hurt you. You know, that would be a very great lesson for the show to teach. And so when it comes to keeping the intended audience in mind, that that argument still doesn't work because you can still have a lesson about you can't be friends with everybody. Well, there's a big problem in children's shows with the whole you can't be friends with everybody lesson in that more often than not, it's basically pointed at sometimes people will just not like you for no reason whatsoever. And there's no point in questioning it, which a lot of kids shows, they that's that's a really complicated mire that a lot of kids shows just can't really delve into. But in terms of the whole, sometimes people just don't want your friendship and they want you to fuck off. My Little Pony already had the opportunity to do that with a friend indeed. And they fucked it up. Yeah, and, they've, and, they, and they fucked it up. And they've made it very clear that they have no interest in that. They really do think you can talk down every monster, uh, every monster out there. Everything can be ta- talked down with friendship. Friendship can solve every problem, even the problems that it, it is directly responsible for causing. To this day, it was a friend indeed has been my worst episode of the series, not only because of that, but also it even tries to justify what Pinky did. Like, like she invaded this guy's personal space, broke into his home and destroyed his belongings. But it's OK because she got him laid like, uh, OK, OK, then. Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, 14. I agree with Lily in the sense that the whole quick reformation thing has been done to death, especially in regards to the comparison to Reaper. Still, I'll take Tempest over Starlight, Nightmare Moon, and Piece of Shit any day. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Tempest I have found more entertaining than the others. Sure, I prefer Sunset over Tempest, but I still think Tempest is cool. So who's helping for more, as Lily puts it, Saturday morning cartoon villains. Now, yes, out of the three of them, Tempest is the best. But that's only because the bar was set so fucking low it would snag on a limbo dancer's clit piercing. Oh, God. Oh, so graphic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. This is what she signed up for. I crossed my legs like, girl, no. <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree with this guy. Um, Tempest, just from a visual standpoint, I really love. Uh, like Tempest is just bay, 100%. Um, open up your thighs, more like it. But um, open up your thighs. Mm, like th- those who follow my AD accounts, y'all know. <laughs> Tempest is just she's fine. But even then, just like her line delivery, um, just the way she carries herself, it, it I-, I love it, and I would love to see more of that without the the ham fisted reformation. You know, why couldn't Tempest just be someone that just, you know, didn't like how they were wasting their magic? Why did it have to be, why did it have to be a forced redemption story? You know, it, it, like I was, I was, I still enjoy Tempest, don't get me wrong, but, and I, and the song itself I like, but the meaning behind the song and what it led up to kind of soured Tempest appeal for me a little bit. So, yeah, like this guy said, I'm really hoping that they try to do more Saturday morning cartoon villains. Yeah, Tempest is the best, but she's the best in a quartet of people who are really just not very good. You know, it's a kingdom of the blind. The man with one eye is king. Yeah. Now, about this capper. I'll admit, me and Lizzie were both like, whoa, that was a good line. Yeah. That happened. Me and Lizzie love that line. I, I loved all of Tempest's early lines. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. How about we start with your complete and total surrender? She was like Sylvanas as a pony. It was great. I remember watching the movie with my roommate. Like, uh, I was, gonna, I was going to the movies. He didn't have anything better to do, so he just went with me. And I remember when Tempest said, let's start with your complete and utter surrender. And my roommate, like, like audibly in the theater was like, damn. <laughs> like, he was like, we had, we walked home, we walked home and he was humming, open up your eyes. And he was like, I can see why you like this show now. I like that temp. I like that Tempest girl. I'm like, 
oh shit, what have I done? Oh, I would have loved to be in the theater just like on the other side and just heard that. Or just heard someone go, damn, across the room. That would be the second best theater story I, I've, I've ever, I would have ever been a part of. After this show, I'll tell you about the Wonder Woman story. Oh, no. You want to hear about the best one I heard uh, I was in now? Sure. I was going to see Frozen. Oh, God. And toward the end of the movie, after Anna unthawed and Elsa, th this, this is what happened. The line goes, you sacrificed yourself for me? Anna says, I love you. A little girl sat in the row behind me yells, kiss her! <laughs> oh my god it was the best moment ever nobody responded it just went dead quiet for a while I would have choked. this little girl was pulled back down in her seat by her mother and i just glanced back and i was like oh that was the best moment ever and i have shipped elsana ever since I'd have, i would have reached back and given that girl a high five oh yeah that that was like thank you that was glory that that was that is still the most memorable moment uh in in any time i've been in the theater it's why i still go to the theater i'm hoping that will uh, that will happen again yeah that's why i like going to see the, going to the theater to see the pokemon movie cuz those reactions were just mm, tasty Oh, this next one, though. Oh, this one. I, I've, I've got to turn my microphone gain down because I've got to read this in, like, the screechiest voice possible. Oh, girl. Because I read this out, and this was just the voice I heard in my own head upon the first time. Because this is magnificent. He's fucking hater! Tempest was desperate, and we don't know if she was rejected only by her friends. She could even be rejected by her own family! In the Pillars, Pony of Shadow's relationship, everyone was guilty for fuck's sake. No one talks shit about Tempest on my watch. I have a drawing of Celestia cocking a shotgun. I'm very serial. Starting with this first sentence, though, he's fucking hater. Like, if I were... Okay, first of all, I'm a she, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, then second of all, if I were sentence structure, where would I be? Cause <laughs> let's just, let's just, I, he's fucking hater where th there must be an is and an a like you're missing like at least two words. Like she is, where are your verbs? She is a fucking hater. That's gotta be it. Like that's gotta be the intended sentence. I don't know. I mean, this guy could have very easily just like ret paladin all over his keyboard. Where are your verbs? Just where are they? They're nowhere to be found. And then the, the next one, Tempest was desperate and we don't know. And that's the problem. The problem is we don't know. You can't, you can't just do this whole, oh, she could have been this. She could have been that. If she was, they should have said it. If that was their intention, they should have said it. That's the thing. If you want some, if you want your character to be sympathetic, you can't just leave your audience to assume oh well maybe she tried this maybe she tried that no if she did you should have said it and if you didn't then that is that is a failure on you as a writer like i because like this is something i had to learn myself where i've written characters that i wanted to be sympathetic and in my mind you know they did what they they did what they could to prevent things from happening but i never wrote that in the story and you know, when I got feedback on that, it was like, you know, OK, I understand if I want people to if I want people to see this character the way I see them, I can't just withhold information because the reader only sees what I put on the page. They don't see what's in my head. That's your responsibility as a writer to put that on the page. I sort of think back to the cutie remark where. You come to Nightmare Moon's um, alternate Equestria, and it's clear the writers are hoping you will see this as a bad end entirely on the basis of Nightmare Moon's a villain, and that's what everything else is. But because every other part of Equestria is going completely to shit, and Nightmare Moon is extremely quiet, that gives a vastly different impression just by virtue of how it's contrasted everywhere else. They're just assuming you'll take a certain per, uh, perspective on the environment, and so their lack of showcasing any way in which it's actually going to shit gives off a very different impression than what they intended. Yeah, as a writer, you can't assume these things. You have to put that information out there. I remember when I just put when I put up the glass of water, a lot of people were saying that uh, in the in the novelization of the film, 
there's all kinds of more information about Tempest and like, and all the stuff she went through from being a Philly to being Tempest. And I pointed out to everyone that's like, guys, you're making my case for me because if this really is the case, if this really was the case with Tempest, that should have been in the fucking movie. Why did it end up on the cutting room floor is my question. It's one of those cases where people just end up instead of countering you, they just instead of countering the point that they're trying to discredit, they're giving it more credit. In the Pillars, Pony of Shadows relationship, everyone was guilty. My problem with the Pillars and the Pony of Shadows isn't that everyone was guilty. It's that they did a redemption story with Satan made of, like, fever dreams and child's tears. I would even go so far as to say that not everyone was guilty because I I say this in my script. You know, I have little patience. Like, I have little sympathy and even less patience for people that just assume their friends are going to know what's wrong with them and not say anything. I am not going to feel sorry for you if you never even bothered to tell your friends how you were feeling. I can't, like, closed mouths don't get fed. You can't just do something based on the assumption that, oh, my friends didn't reach out to help me when you didn't even vocalize your discomfort. And again... Uh, we've been, we, based on what we're shown, Stygian never a- even attempted to, to tell the pillars how he was feeling. So it's like, okay, so you just did this very, uh, sh- short-sighted, you made this very short-sighted and foolish decision and got the, got the reaction that one would expect to happen and you're blaming it all on them. No, it's all on you because you didn't say how you were feeling. That's your fault. Doing a redemption for the Pony of Shadows is like trying to do a redemption story for the Dunkel Ziffer Tentacle. I'm gonna pretend like I know what that is. It's a very... It, it is... I'll tell you about it after, but it's a PSA that on paper sounds like the silliest thing ever. But when you actually watch it, it is the most revolting thing in the world. My stomach is churning just hearing that. Whew, what, what, who we got, what would we got next? Oh, hang on. Before we move on, I have to point out that just 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 look at that drawing of Princess Celestia holding a shotgun and wearing sunglasses. Like, you know what this reminds me of? What? This reminds me of when an artist meltdown story went up and Toon Critic came in and started like trying to like posture and and beat his chest and flex his muscles. And was like, oh, you're just making my point for me. Toon one, Lily zero. And I came in with a P and I just bit back with, all right, well, I mean, if keeping an imaginary score makes you feel, makes you sleep better at night, then by all means, go ahead, bro. Pod kettle, you're just making my point for me. And then ran off. But then he came back and posted a drawing someone did of his OC knocking out my OC in a boxing ring as if to say, my friend drew me punching you out. That means I'm right. That's how this works, right? I'm gonna do the same thing I did when that happened and just be like, yep, I'm just gonna not. <laughs> that's between y'all. That's bet- Oh, you saw that? That's between y'all. Uh, it popped up on my, on my Twitter feed. I was like, that's between y'all. It was the funniest thing. It was like, I, I looked at it and I, I looked at this and I was like, bro, do you not know how sad this is? I actually feel sorry for you now. Like, are you all right? Ooh, once again, Mate? that is between y'all. That is <laughs> yeah, between I you two. I was like, let, let me not even try. Who we got next? Part of what uh, she seems to not know slash ignore is that the writers often have to make villains good in the end. So Hasbro can sell toys of them to little kids, even if the writers don't want to. Now, first of all, why do you got to make them good to sell toys to little kids? I'm pretty. They sell toys of Chrysalis. Yeah, they sell toys of Chrysalis. She hasn't been. Oh, my gosh. that That's proof. She's getting reformed. Oh, fuck. I'm pretty sure they sell toys of Adagio Dazzle. Uh, do they sell to, did they sell toys of discord before the reformation before I'm not sure if they did before, but they definitely did after, because the thing is discord got reformed only a year after his introduction and his popularity hadn't really kicked in yet. So they didn't really see a marketing opportunity for him yet because the show was comparatively young and the fandom was comparatively young at that point. So I don't think Hasbro kind of saw a marketing opportunity with discord yet. 
So that, that, that he's kind of up in the air like the rest of him. Uh, also, part of the beauty of Finn, in my opinion, is how simple the backstories can be, but not when they're too simple. Way to make my point for me, bro. Because that lets the fans interpret the characters in their own ways, different from one person to another. And there it is! There it is! There it is right there! It's good because it's simple enough that I can warp it into whatever headcanon I want. And that's all I care about. There it is! And there's the losing battle I will forever be fighting. I don't care if it's not good. It creates openings for fan works, and that's all I care about. I'm reminded of back in season one where people were like, I don't really like the show, but I love the fandom. That's like, that's like being excited about paying $21 for stadium beer, but you don't like hockey. Like, I never really tried to argue with people on that because it was like, okay, well, I mean, it, that's how you enjoy the show. That's how you would enjoy the show, whatever. But it was, it was always something I was never able to kind of get because it's like i never understood how you could like a fandom that's based on the show but not like the show like i, I can i can kind of understand from like if you're just like viewing art like if like for example if you've been following an artist and they start doing mlp work and you don't necessarily like the show but you like their artwork and it's like okay i, I kind of like this but when you're into like a whole fandom and not even care about the show it, it I don't know. Just, just for me, I, I never understood it. Well, I mean, I don't need to offer like a, a counterpoint to this, to this like a lot of the times because the people who are actually just into the show for this, they don't take part in critical discussions about the show. They don't give a shit. It's like someone was negative about this episode. I don't fucking care. Because they don't watch the show. Or, or rather, they don't watch the show in, a show in any serious matter. Uh, like if they really are in it, in it just for the openings for fan works. They don't give a shit what some uh, some critic is doing. Like, if you tried posting it on a forum, they would just say, I don't fucking care. Fuck off. Quit trying to start shit, asshole. It's, that, that's kind of sad, though. Like, whenever you want to bring up a critical point for discussion and it's interpreted as, oh, you're just trying to start shit. I mean, well, if by shit you mean a discussion, then I guess you're right. But it's like, I'm not trying to start, like, a fight or, 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 or like, a... Or like a a spat or something i just want to discuss this thing you know like some that's how people some people enjoy that oh that comes up later so the next one is no no i get that i mean it's more the fact that it seems to happen maybe a little too often and it's similar and in a uh, too similar way stygy and starlight and tempest all have seemingly one negative experience in their past and end up becoming villainous you have way too many commas in this sentence bro I'm ju i just want to say that I just want to say that right here, there are way too many commas in the sentence, and I abuse com- I didn't notice how many- I didn't notice how many commas were in the sentence until you pointed it out, and I'm like, wow. Sure, it can take just one bad day to turn a person to a villain, one particularly bad day to show them the Tempest, but it feels like the villains are kind of being copy-pasted with the tragic backgrounds. There are some easy fixes for this, like Starlight should have come back a few times before being won over. That would have been great. Give them more opportunities to try and salvage this piece of shit. Yeah, like have her be a recurring villain for a while and then have her like if, if that was your intention, like give us some time to to just just let 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 Starlight sink in before you just make this big change with her. Have villains be like WoW expansions. Keep them around for two seasons. <laughs> anyway, her background with cutie marks being uh, bad should have been expanded. Absolutely. Say she had multiple friends who drifted in her part to pursue their own talents and dreams brought about by their cutie marks. Starlight gradually losing touch and becoming embittered by her friends, blaming cutie marks and seeking to erase them from Equestria. See, I love how some of the people in this own thread just write, pr they prove my point about these, about these characters by the fact that they just pulled better ideas right out of their ass. Why could the writers not do this? I hit my microphone. I mean, that's a really good idea, actually, you know, that... Like this whole like this whole thing that, they, that 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 this person talks about about like exploring Starlight and why why she feels the way she feels that could have been like I I like how she is in season six but this could have been the season season six like occasionally come back to Starlight and give us a little bit more like every every time we see Starlight drip feed us a little bit more L let us give us a little bit more information and then when you do decide to reform her it'll just make it. It'll make it worth the the effort because you actually put in that time to to flesh out the why behind her philosophy instead of just doing it all in one go. Stygian's backstory is okay, but could use more meat, like how he became the Pony of Shadows. Maybe he studied books left over from Sombra's reign. Oh fuck, that's cool. Damn. Studying and using 
studying and using dark magic until it eventually corrupted him. Or maybe the darkness is something born from his own magic or an entity he made a pact with. That's so cool! Why did they not do that? Like, this is something that's just some random brony pulled out of their ass as part of, like, a forum discussion. And it never occurred to anyone to do stuff like that. That would have been awesome! That would have been so awesome! They had a whole two-part video. They had a whole two-part episode to do, to do this idea. And they spend 90% of it on fluff. Like, the entire first part of Shadow's Play is just them gathering the stuff for the ritual. And the second part, like, 90% of it is just taken up by them all talking around the map. Like, cut some of that shit and actually, like, do the story of the episode. I'm- it's very early <laughs> for me. This person needs to send an application to DHX ASAP. I can see them- like, wh where's that check at, DHX? Yeah, th this this one right here needs to be a writer immediately. Tempest I'm mostly okay with, but again, they had a whole movie and she could use a little more. I exactly. Like, what should have been a whole- well, I think I said this earlier, what should have been a whole act of the movie is instead one scene, and that's a problem. Cut out that segment with the pirates. Exactly, cut out the segment with the pirates entirely. Like, uh, you know, Solano, she's fine as hell, but girl- your scene, your scene didn't add much to the story, and the song was possibly the worst in the movie. So, you weren't utilized well, for sure. Oh, no. Like, Open Up Your Eyes and Rainbow are still worse. Uh, For me, Open Up Your Eyes is saved by the fact that it, it, it sounds good. The musical number is just trash. Time to Be Awesome has a bad number and sounds terrible. It's like, ev it's like every Rainbow Dash song ever. <laughs> I think I put I'll Fly as an honorable mention on the worst of list. So the next one. This is where the unhinged rage comes in. He is Jerry Pete. He never understands and is just a fucking asshole who tries to counter argue and shouldn't have become a brony in the first place if he can't handle see any basic hit basics or hints of character development. If by basic and hints you mean people that things that people just made up. Uh, I got a, I got sent this one specifically through Tumblr and I tore it and I tore into it. But let, let, let's look at the one thin veneer of a point amidst all the neo-Nazi drivel. Can't see any basics or hints of character development. And it's like, well, that, 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 that's ultimately the problem. It's like, it's, it's always hints. It's just hints, maybes, mites. There might have been, the, Tempest might have had this problem throughout her whole life. She might have tried to make more friends and failed. She might have done this. She might have done that. Maybes, mites. You can't work with that. It's like uh, it's like uh, a microcosm of everything wrong with Steven Universe. They're doing everything in maybes and mites and possibly and they're drip feeding you little ideas. And it's just like, will you just capitalize on something? Will you just do an actual idea? Don't hint for character development. Actually do character development. I think this is a side effect of fandom culture in that writer, like people who grew up in fandoms and, 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 like, enjoy those theories and, like, like people who theorize about what could have happened and what could have been and all that. They uh, they take that attitude and, and apply it to their writing where instead of fleshing something out and then having their viewers or their audience postulate based on a, something that's fully fleshed out, instead... They either half explain something and don't explain something at all and expect the audience to do the work for them. And as a writer, you can't do that. You can't just give an incomplete story and expect the you can't you and expect the audience to fill in the blanks. You know, it, it's like there's a difference between each person interpreting a work differently and each person making up their own ending for something that was never given to them. This is why nobody ever won a Pulitzer for a choose-your-own-adventure book. Like, they're fun, but come on. They're, they're, the Goosebumps choose-your-own-adventure books are fun, but they're never the highlights of the series. Let's be honest. Now, this one here, this next one, basically just came in and tore everyone else to pieces. It was great. Like, we had the thing about Tempest, she clear, wasn't clear exactly a sympathetic character from the start, and after open up your eyes and blah blah blah. Lily clearly knows this, since at, at the 154 mark, she says, Throughout the second act of the film, I was admittedly getting rather tired of her shtick and wanted the film to do more with her. Then comes the, the third act, and I immediately regretted that. Indicating that, yes, Tempest wasn't despot depicted as sympathetic at first, and that the film went in that direction. 
I'm not sure what you even think Lily's point is, since the problem you stated is something that's kind of obvious and not contradictory to what's said in the video. I mean, what else can we say to that? What else can we add? Yeah, like, they're basically making my point for me, and this was kind of what motivated me to uh, want to do this, because it was the first time I've seen, like, people who really want to argue against me actually being f being contradicted in real time. I don't know who they're responding to at this point, but it's like, however much you like the person or the amount of vitriol in their speech, there's still a point being made in there and 12 minutes of explanation. As far as acknowledging counterpoints is concerned, she did say that Tempest's character was enjoyable up to that point. I fail to see how 12 minutes of explanation is somehow bashing without explaining why they're bad villains, which isn't even true in Luna's case, highlighted comment. I'm assuming this is the first video from Lily you've watched. In that case, she's made four videos about slash related to Luna and her role in the show and two videos about Starlight. What counterpoint is there to be had? Damn. Basically, someone who like uh, there's a handful of people here making phony arguments and someone just came in like you guys are so full of shit. It's it's hilarious. And then respond and then responding to that one guy who was screaming, uh, uh, like about my, uh, who is screaming about my name. So I was on Tumblr and came across this and just posted that like the same derisive crap that I, that I made on Tumblr. Cause I, I, everything I summarized in regards to the whole basics and hints was also a post I had on Tumblr. So next we have is while I've heard of Lily before, I admit this is the first video of hers I've watched. Oh, okay. Then you haven't actually heard of me because if someone's heard of me, but has never actually seen any of my videos, that means they've heard bullshit about me from the likes of Aguilar. Either that or they've just heard your name and like just recognize the name or something. After seeing more, quite a few of them seem to be filled with a lot of vitriol and anytime someone raises another opinion against hers, they're immediately shot down. So excuse me if I take Lily's opinion with a grain of salt as she does not have, uh, she does have quite a bit of anger in her videos instead of acting like instead of acting calm like a proper reviewer analyst would do tone policing i can't i can't i can't make the point that you're wrong i'll just get pissy that i think you're angry but they just admitted in the same paragraph though that they're very unfamiliar with with the content it would be it would be like me saying that that star trek is boring and every series is the same based on watching one episode of one random series you my opinion my opinion in that case is worthless because i have only seen one episode of one star trek series and i can't judge the entire body of work based on that well you remember what i said earlier about how because of the nature in which my line reading works if someone wants to they can easily um ignore uh, as much as they can to just pretend that I'm angry at everything. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening here. Someone clearly saw a lot of the response, a lot of the, well, I, I say this in massive air quotes is just like response videos to me and went into my video, in, into this video with a preconceived notion that I'm some kind of raging asshole and then heard the clear and direct and distinct way in which I record and just dis and th and that was it. They just shut their brain off and refused to go any further. This is the same person, mind, who didn't realize that I was, uh, who, like, completely seemed unaware of the fact that I had, that I didn't think that, that Tempest was sympathetic throughout the whole video, and didn't realize that I had already acknowledged the very same counterpoint that they pretended that I hadn't. So, they went into the video, let it play, but didn't pay attention to any of it. I'm not looking forward to when I get more subscribers. And this is a shit I gotta deal with every fucking day. Is this what I have to look forward to? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unless unless you want to tow the brony line. <sighs> um, unless you want to sugarcoat everything. Like, um, um, yeah, if you're not going to sugarcoat everything, get ready. And hell, you could even sugarcoat everything and some people will still be unbearably unbear ragey at you. Look at how much Aguilar stalks Dr. Wolf. I mean, I kind of learned that when I did my Slice of Life video because the first time I the first time I reviewed it, I was a lot more neutral and like, uh, I don't like it, but I can see why some people do. And it was kind of like very, very hand wavy and, and stuff like that. And then about nine months later, Nine months later, the anger was born. Um, <laughs> when I did my top and bottom five of season five, I wasted no time putting that video at the top. Not not video. That episode at the top because like, no, I, mm -mm, I can't do that. Th this episode is bad. This is why. And that is why I put it at the top of my bottom five. The top of my bottom five. Oxymorons for your ass. Um... Yeah. 
So I kind of learned early on that I couldn't. Like a specialty club in Amsterdam, let's go into the tops and the bottoms. Yeah. Uh, I, I learned early on that sugarcoating things wasn't going to get me anywhere. So I'm, I, I might as well emulate my favorite pony and be honest. Oh, and you entirely missed the part about how Tempest would be a character, or lack of that part. Lily needed to include a counter-argument as to how she could have been made better instead of just yammering on about how she, Luna, and the Pony of Shadows sucked. Didn't, like, three separate people point this out? Yes. Before this comment was made? The very next comment. Well, if you're looking for a part where Lily suggests how to make Tempest better, there's a bit that starts at the 434 mark. This one came th This one came in with the timestamps, by the way. Citing your sources like a boss. They had the- they had the receipts. The sad part is that Tempest has a single line that gives off a much better idea for her as a villain, and this suggestion continues on until 550. The first Starlight video was shortly after the cutie remark and centered on her as a villain, since that's all there was at the time. The second one is about her refor her as a reformed antagonist posted during season seven. The first Luna video, because th this same person bitched and moaned about the fact that I have four videos about Luna. The first Luna video was specifically around Do Princess Dream a Magic Sheep? The second one is about Luna's potential. The third one is pretty much dedicated to giving suggestions about specific story ideas for Luna. And the fourth is about Celestia and Luna collectively in a royal problem. None of them are about comparing Celestia to Luna. This is the part where someone complained that I had four videos about Princess Luna, and then someone else had to point out that there are four videos about different aspects of Princess Luna. Because that's how Glass of Water works. I can't do a complete breakdown of a single character in one video. I mean, I could, but it would have to be like an end-of-year 90-minute video. Yeah, that's, that's kind of something that I realized with um, my own character talk videos. If I wanted to make a character talk, I would have to talk about one specific aspect of that character. Like when I did um, She Don't Got It, the video like tackling the whole theory of Twilight Sparkle having uh, being on the autism spectrum. Spoiler, she isn't. Uh, that, that was just a whole eight minute video in and of itself. Or like the video on Princess Luna getting too much love was its own subject instead of her whole character as a whole. Like, the more fleshed out a character is, the more videos or more time it's going to take to talk about them as a whole. The only time you can really talk about a character in their entirety in one video is if they've only been in one episode, and that's your only frame of reference. This next one. It's great. None of them are about... Uh, someone just quoting the previous one. None of them are about comparing Celestia to Luna. What is context? Lily hates Celestia and Starlight. That's something I've noticed from watching those videos. What is nuance? But, but the thing is, like, I don't I don't even understand the thing about what is context. Like, what the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's a reflex. Uh, when uh, somebody points out, somebody points out that um, uh, somebody uh, like if uh, you'll probably see this a lot is someone will say something stupid on like Twitter. And then they'll get they'll get shit for it because they should because they said something stupid and then they'll say oh my words are oh my words are being taken out of context and then they won't give the context like i've been taken out of context before and what i try like what i try to do keyword try is that if i am taken out of context i repeat the context to make sure that it's not missed again because I assume that, okay, maybe I didn't make myself clear the first time, so let me explain it again. I, I had to deal with that about just a few days ago. Somebody asked me about this. There's this rumor that has been going around uh, about me, thanks to a, a certain flaming douche, um, that I once said that autism doesn't exist and that it's just parents being lazy. And someone asked me about that. And so I had it broken into two parts. Here's what I actually said. And then here's how this rumor got started. And it was relatively long. I think in total it was like a page and a half long. Um, and that is what you, that is what you should do. If you're going to claim that you're being taken out of context, that's what you, that's how you should always respond to it. You reval you, uh, you re-clarify what it is you said, and then you explain how you got that, how that person got that misconception in the first place. That, that, that misconception being a lie by omission. I don't know if you saw that one. Uh, I think I did. I think I did. Okay. And that's why I got confused because I've seen your previous post talking about autism in the past and it just, it, it didn't add up. It just, did the, the accusation just didn't add yeah, up. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, the, the, uh, a single post was screenshotted and then twisted by a neo not by Kiwi Farms. And when Josh was looking for, like, a whole bunch of stuff for his, like, 30-minute gish gallop, he just took that, didn't bother to confirm it, and then just ran with it. Because if he had actually gone to find the original post on my blog, he would have run into every other post I'd made about autism. Who we got next? 
Well, uh, one more, one more point, one more point to highlight here is that Lily hates Celestia and Starlight. That's something I've noticed from watching these videos. I make a point of mentioning this in like the best musical numbers, but I hate these characters for specific reasons. It's not just a random allergic reaction to the characters in question. That's what a lot of people think liking and dislike something is. It's just random and it can't be changed. There's never a specific reason for liking or dislike something. You just you just like or dislike it because that's how opinions work, apparently. See, with me, I never really got the impression. Like, I knew that you didn't like Celestia, but I all like I had the impression that it was because of how she was used and not because of her herself, because you ended up making a whole video as to how she could be better. And I was like, OK, I like, OK, from this, I'm getting the vibe that she can see how she can be how she can be better. So if you're going out of your way to explain how something can be better, I don't see how you can hate something like because usually when I hate something, it's like I don't even want to try and and um see the, the good in it. But with most things that I dislike, I can see where where it could be better. I could see where Pinkie Pie could be better used as a character. I could see where Prince do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep could have been a better episode. And it's like. I don't know. I don't see how people don't get that. Now, the screaming, mo the screaming moron is back. Uh, they uh, they saw my Tumblr post and they lost it. Like this was someone who disrespected my very humanity by misgendering me and then lost their mind about a Tumblr post that basically said it's like, well, I mean, if hints are all you need, clearly it's like you just like eating shit. This is fucking disgusting. This comment just proves my fucking point. Someone who is clearly mad that I won't respect their opinions when they won't respect my very humanity. Basic hypocrisy for you. And then just, then just went into a whole bunch of stuff of thought, oh, I'm not wrong. Your subscribers are just retarded idiots who think you're smart. I'm not the one at fault. It's everyone else who's just dumb. The usual, usual kind of stuff. And even then, it bears no relevance to the argument. So even if all of that were true, even if all of that were true, what does it change? It was like, as I said in one particular video, even if I was a pathetic jobless loser living in my mother's basement, I'm still right. Now, this this one guy who the, the, like the one who was basically clear wasn't paying attention to the video. Um, what This was a line that they were not going to bother crossing. It's just wow. Bigoted much. Your argument against Lily lost any chance of being listened to the moment you decided to act like trans people don't exist or are the worst things ever. I don't like Lily's videos, but at least have logical reasons for, but I at least have logical reasons for doing so, unlike you. The next one, and this is where the whole thing kind of goes off the rails. Are you trying to piss me off? I hate her for making shit videos that acts like she is the right one while everyone else is wrong or inferior. Doesn't register character development and keep asking, acting hostile to a character she doesn't like, despite that they are becoming more likable. Whine like a little bitch because Sapphire made respect the artist, make petty insults to everyone she doesn't like, or if they get more likes than her. Do I have to continue? Oh yeah, she is not worthy of being a transgender, mainly because of her shitty Tumblr crap. And then just post two random videos that I just blocked out because fuck giving those people attention. Or three random videos. Essentially, the point of me being r whether or not I'm right or wrong got completely abandoned. I just rolled my eyes when they said you weren't worthy of being like what what your identity like transgender because it takes me back to when I was younger. And I would have kids tell me that, oh, you're not really black because I because I don't abide by the usual stereotypes that are that are um, embodied by stereotypical black males. Like, oh, because I don't play basketball or because I'm, I'm not uh, because I'm not that good at dancing or because of silly shit like that. It's like, oh, you're not really black. Like, bitch. You got, look at me. You got Carlton in real life. Yeah, that's the thing. That And that's why that's always, my, that's one of my favorite moments of that, um, of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, because that was me. You know, that was, that was me having to deal with that whole thing of like, oh, you're, 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 you're just fake black. You just, you're just like, look, the thing, cause like the thing is people want to, to, um, quantify how transgender you are or how gay you are or how black you are how whatever you are and sadly it happens within our own communities too 
And while we're having this useless argument, the people outside, the people that don't like who we are, whoever they may be, are are doing are doing what they can to keep us down and we're just fighting amongst ourselves. And it's fucking pathetic. It's you know, it, it like it, it legitimately gets me like upset because it's like we have so many things that are actively working against us and we're here worried about whether or not you're really this or whether or not you're really that as though you're an authority on how how black or how transgender someone is well this is very clearly a bigot um uh this is very clearly and uh just and look because of the nature of how these beliefs work this is very clearly a neo-nazi who's looking for an excuse to misgender someone and not get criticized for it because that's what that's that's what that's what uh that's what conservatives are in this day and age and so they're just latching onto whatever excuse they can. So if, so if a trans person doesn't have perfect behavior, that's grounds to start misgendering them. Here's the funny thing. There is basically one trans person who is the ultimate argument against all of this. And that is Blair White. Blair White is a uh, Blair White is a trans woman who actively courts neo-Nazis and transphobes, spews transphobic rhetoric herself and, you know, just uh is the friend argument. She's the trans person that far right morons can point to and go, this person agrees with me. That means I'm right. What do you have to say about that? That person is an idiot. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, she serves a similar vein as Milo Yiannopoulos or fuck. What, what, what's that one congressman? Ben Carson. It was Ben Carson. Was, was Ben Carson like, uh, what is he? Uh, Ben, Ben like- Carson is a Republican. Uh, ben Carson is a Republican politician who spews a lot of stuff about like, oh, guns aren't the problem, it's mental health. And, you know, talks about how Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. Oh, that, that's just He's fantastic. black himself. That, oh, that's just fantastic. So basically, uh, basically a male Stacey Dash. Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, now I don't know who Stacey Dash is. Stacey Dash, like Stacey Dash is like around that. She's, um, she's much younger. She was in that movie uh, Clueless with Alicia Sil- Silverstone. She uh made a lot of arguments against like Black Lives Matter and saying that uh, like don't quote me on this. I think I, I remember her saying something along the lines of like Black History Month should be abolished or some shit. But I'm like, okay, girl, all right. I mean, sure, go ahead, go ahead, girl. I think I think Morgan Freeman said that at one point too, which was kind of weird. Yeah. I was dis- I was disappointed. But anyway, Blair White is probably the worst trans person in existence. Like it, when it comes to that the title of just worst trans person in existence, she's fighting really hard with uh, what was her name? Michelle Martinez. I think that was her name. Whatever. I'll, I'll I'll look it up later. She's fighting really hard with Michelle Martinez for the title of worst trans person in existence. I don't need to misgender Blair White because first of all, it would make any argument against her less credible because you know you don't have a very strong argument when that's what you're reaching for. But second of all, Blair White is wrong about a lot of things, so I can just stay focused on that. That's the thing. If if this person is as bad as you are portraying them to be, then that alone should speak for itself. I don't need to talk about, like, it's this thing about trying to uh, basically say a person you don't like isn't worthy of being transgender because you think that their being around will delegitimize trans rights. It's why tra- it's why it's why the, it's why the true scum movement is going around. You know, trans people who are who shits on any tra- other trans person who does not experience dysphoria the way they think it's experienced by everyone. The problem is, is that the people who are trying to basically destroy your rights, they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. They'll do it anyway. They don't they don't care about whether about the science of dysphoria or about like the science of uh, of like the 80 million makeups of gender chromosomes. They don't give a shit. They, they they don't care about reality. They don't care about scientific facts. So trying to purify your own movement is a waste of time. It really is. It's just it's another case of people just trying to uh, distract from the main point of the movement and just and making it about purifying people rather than just fighting against the real people that are trying to fuck you over. It's ide- uh, ideological purity, because they think that conservatives operate on the same level of reason that they do. Yeah, I think there was some performer that um, agreed to be at um, Trump's inauguration, trying to make the point that, uh, oh, if we reach out to them, maybe maybe they'll understand. But the thing is, wh- where have you been in the past, what, 100, 200 years? 
But that's what that's what happens. Is like they they can't these people can't win an argument against me. They can't. They focus on things like you think you're right and you're uh, you're hostile sometimes because it's easy. Uh, it's e- it's an easy argument for them to it's an easy argument for them to circle jerk about. Um, it's it, it, it's it's an it's what's the fallacy called argumentum ad hominem where you start talking about the per- the quality of a person's character because you can't actually say that they're wrong. And I think they bring it up later on in the thread where like the majority of the people in the thread just realize that okay this is this is clearly not going anywhere and if if if, if there's one thing I'll give fan fiction credit for it's this and it's going back to them policing the community like even when even when someone is like dead ass wrong they'll at least realize that okay maybe this thread should be locked cuz it's not going anywhere if there's anything like if there's, if there's one thing I'll give fan fiction credit for as far as forums are concerned, it's that. Um, so, yeah, basically this person comes in, derails the entire conversation, and basically everyone starts pissing on them just entirely. And it's someone like um, uh, this one here. And uh, this sort of highlights like two different things. I think I had this conversation with Patch uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's like and uh, because this per- this one person like this person. Yeah, it j- just gets really high, just really uh, on to the point of like basically arguing about my gender. And it's like, and who cares if uh, Lily wants to be a girl now? It's her choice. You claim Lily acts like a child. From what I've seen, you're not exactly mature yourself. Some people actually expected me to jump. Like, I, I got this ask on Tumblr where someone wanted me to jump in and correct this person about the specifics. Namely, that it's not that I want to be a girl. It's that I was always a girl and had to, like, basically, God was drunk when uh, when they made my body and I have to fix their mistake. And the thing is, they're not going to, the even if you tried to correct them, it's like, there, there's a point where you realize this person clearly is not going to care. And even if, even if you weren't, even if you weren't transgender, they would have, they would have found something else. Cause if it's not one thing, it's another. Oh no, no. I'm talking about this person who, who is explicitly like countering the bigoted asshole. Oh. They want, they wanted me to correct them on the specifics. And my response was, I don't need to. They're already arguing like this, this person, this person is approaching trans people in good faith. So they will be corrected on the fact that like this person calls me a transvestite earlier. This person is clearly just getting their terminology wrong. They'll be corrected on that if they do any if they if they'll do any Google search whatsoever or any random person like if, if any random person stepped in is like, yeah, it's actually the term is transgender, not transvestite. That's a different thing entirely. This person here would be like, oh, shit. <laughs> Basically me when I was 17. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like this person's already going in good faith. So it's it's like an it's 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 an imperfect ally is what it is, is is what they are. Um, And so I don't really need to correct them because they're not showing bigotry. It's just myopia is what I say. It's like what I kind of say about silver a lot. It's just myopia in that once they've actually like read up on the subject, they'll realize, oh, wow, I was getting a lot of stuff wrong there. And they won't need convincing. It'll just be like it, it, it'll be, it'll be like correcting someone's grammar. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, my bad. Um, they're they 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 get they get the nucleus. It's just the specifics is what they don't quite grasp. But you know, they don't need to grasp the specifics. They 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 get the they know the important part. They know what my name is and what my pronouns are, and that's basically all they need to know. And they'll get the specifics eventually. And I was like, can I just call for this thread to be locked, please? It's just descending into petty arguments about who's arrogant or not, and just argue about Lily Pete and how offensive she really is. And the very last post is this happens a lot when it comes to a Lily Pete video. It's never about the content of said video itself. It always turns to Lily as a person. And that's the thing. They point out they they like like kudos to this person, by the way. Like, good on you. The thing is like, like people keep pointing out the flaw in these discussions, acknowledge it, acknowledge that it's a problem, but then keep doing it. And that's what confuses me the most here. This is why I tend to have a lot. This is why I, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of detractors because most of my detractors get wrapped up like the people who are really passionate about disagreeing with me. They get wrapped up in this mire of me as a person because that's all any of my vocal detractors want to talk about. My most vocal detractor is I don't want to say Aguilar. I'm pretty sure there is like one louder one. One of my most vocal detractors is Aguilar, who never, ever, ever counters anything I say whatsoever. When I had bug spray go up and I talked about a lot of community issues and whatnot, a lot of different behaviors, he didn't have a response at all. 
uh, in any way, shape, or form. What he had was a two-part video where he brought someone else on to tell embarrassing, to tell seemingly embarrassing stories about me, because that was all he had. He couldn't say I was wrong, so he had to try and silence me through embarrassment. Of course, I have the actual chat logs from every conversation I've had with that person, with the person he brought on, and it was very easy to defang every single thing this insufferable, uh, asshole said about me i mean at least you have at least you're prepared that's all i can say oh yeah oh 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 i'm oh i am always prepared it, it did not take much to go into an old laptop that was still hanging on pull out a skype database file go through and go well there's that and there's that and there's that and there's that and here we go yeah hanging on to old computers kind of saved my life a couple times um just when um like when it comes to video production when i needed to get old assets onto my new machine and I was like oh shit I forgot that there's this one old asset that I use in this one video I did years ago that I want to use again well time to bring out old faithful but I never publicly acknowledge these videos in, in the in like in their entirety um just like how I never publicly talked about like Josh's response video to me like people will notice that I never I'll occasionally talk about bits of it anecdotally but I've never made an official response to it and the reason for that is because it's pointless to do so. These videos boil down to I'm upset about something you said, so I'm going to I'm going to get all kinds of irrelevant information I possibly can as to why you're a terrible person. Just trying to discredit someone by just pointing out that they're a ter- that, that that they do bad things in other situations and hoping that will do all the work. Trying to just manufacture controversy in place of an actual argument. I don't entertain those kind of arguments at all, like in any way shape or form. It's it's a, it's an attempt to change the subject and to get you talking about your past when you shouldn't be. So these people they they posit themselves as my most vo- as as my detractors, but they never actually disagree with anything I say. They just hear me say something, get mad about it, and then immediately run off to try and dig through my dirty laundry. That's what those three videos that I blocked out were. They were just a whole string of embarrassing, mostly made-up stories. None of which had any bearing on anything whatsoever. Do I really have to look forward to this? When I ha- when I get uh, when my subscriber count gets up, is this what I gotta look forward to? Well, if the likes of the Rift are still around, yeah, probably. I mean, it's I, I I've said I've said this for a while, and I, and I, I I tend to caution people about this when it talks about like get like the more involved you are in the Brony community or the analysis community, the more deeply involved you are the easier it is for things to blow up in your face because you just say one wrong thing. You make one wrong point. You, you disc, you disprove one wrong headcanon and everything can just blow up right in your fucking face. I mean, think about how all this shit with KP started. Uh, The only reason all the rumors surrounding KP were even able to spread was because a lot of people in the analysis community had a lot of resentment to her because they thought she was an attention whore. So, most of them didn't come to her defense, and some of them even went as far as to spread the rumors, like help the rumors spread. Yeah, and that was the thing. I remember being around when that happened, and with me, I had no prior engagement with, with KP prior to this whole thing happening. The only time I had ever interacted with her was I met I met her once at BronyCon. We ran, we ran into each other in the artist alley and someone pointed out to me that that was who she was. I didn't even recognize her even though like she had appeared on camera before. So this was like, she was like, I didn't really know her like that and I hadn't really watched her content. So I was just, I was just confused by the whole thing and just asking myself some, like just the questions like, okay, then like if they had a problem with her, then why wasn't this brought up? Like, like it, again, it wasn't adding up and I didn't like get engaged in the whole Anon KP leaks thing because I just, I didn't, I couldn't verify whether or not this was true. And if I can't do that, I I can't share it. I always remembered one specific thing. And I pointed this out in both uh, Discord Princess and (sighs) Discord Princess and Horse Famous. I pointed out in both of them. And that was that during the record, while I was working on helping work on Analysis Anarchy, Josh comes to me and said that they were all having a problem with KP. KP uh, clearly thought she'd sign on for a voice actor and was expecting other people to write her dialogue. 
they wanted her to collaborate on the writing. And Josh even gave me like this, like this man, this uh, thing about it's like, oh, KP, we're not going to be your vessel for attention and whatnot. But then I asked, well, what happened? Well, he just offered that as like a hypothetical line, which turned out to be bullshit based on what I'm about to tell you. I asked what happened when they confronted KP about uh, about this problem. He said they hadn't. And they'd mostly just been like watching from the sidelines as this was happening around them. And I said, well, that's what you've got to do. Like, you've got to drop everything you're doing right now. Get out of this call with me. Stop telling me about this and go talk to her about it. A few days later, he still hadn't done that. They'd been trying to nudge her into helping with the writing, but KP just wasn't biting. They, they were trying to bait her into uh, helping with the script, but KP wouldn't, bite, wouldn't take it. And I, and I just repeated the same advice. It's just, no, you have to actually open your fucking mouth and talk to her like an adult. This is not high school. You're in a semi-professional environment. Fucking act like it. And that's something that I just had to learn. Like ever since I started college, it's something that I had to learn. Sometimes the hard way is just that you have to tell people um, what the problem is. Because I've been on, I've been on both ends of it. I've been the person that refused to say anything, and I've also been the person who was doing something like innocuous. And was never told about it until the other party got drastic. So being on both sides of that kind of on that kind of that kind of scenario, I've started to realize that if I have a problem with someone, I got I gotta tell them about it. As uncomfortable as it makes me, I have to do it, and it still makes me. It's it's something I still struggle with to this day, but it's something I have to force myself to do, this regardless of how uncomfortable it makes me. Well, it's come to my attention that a lot of people in the Brony community view this kind of direct communication as uh, as 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 if it's rude. Like it's it's rude to tell someone they're doing something wrong. It's rude to tell someone that they're being inappropriate. I have generally been this direct and upfront with everyone because I respect most people enough to be direct and honest with them. For that effort, I have been accused of everything from not letting people have their opinions, trying to force people to be of certain political ideologies or, like, just ideological concepts, trying to force women to be feminist, uh, and being emotionally abusive. So it's clear what what the, what many of these people consider uh, respect to be. Like, a respect to them, a respectful relationship is one where you never contradict someone. And I kind of highlighted this in You're Wrong and That's Okay. What these people mean when they say respect different opinions is don't contradict me. I never really got that. I never got why people were just, well, I mean, I guess it's because I used to be like that until, again, until I got older. And then I see people be like that and it's like, just why? Um, In my, like, in my opinion, it's, th this is what, this is what someone who really can't handle hearing different opinions is. That's what that looks like. People ask, it's like, well, what does it look like when someone actually can't handle different opinions? That right there. That's what it looks like. When they respond to a contradictory opinion with, well, you know, it's all opinion, man, and I just have my opinions. And that's, that, like, that's the thing. Oh, hey, people, take a shot for every time I say that's the thing in this video. Uh... I've um I've had a lot of great conversations with people in my comments that have disagreed with me. Uh, there's one person who heavily disagreed with my thoughts on how Starlight was handled in season six. And a lot of the times when she comes up, we go back and forth and back and forth about what we like and what we don't like. And I enjoy talking with them because it's like, OK, I can I, I see where they're coming from. OK, may, maybe there's maybe there's some validity in there. It's just like I enjoy ha like. I, I, I think you compared it to a boxing match one time, like a sparring match. And I, I enjoyed that, you know, it's, it's, it's like our opinions, put them both in the ring, duke it out, you know. And then I remember there was this one time where someone just butted in and just like went in on me. And then the person I was arguing with, despite agreeing with the nucleus of what the other person was saying, was like, dude, wh what's your problem? And then they were like, oh, you agree with me. Why are you taking his side? It's, it's, it's like because we were having a conversation and you just just came in just like like uh, bring, first of all, bringing up shit that isn't relevant and just like attacking him instead of actually like addressing the point. 
And th- I think that was the moment where I was like, okay, so now I know that it's not a whole thing of me not accepting different opinions. I know that's not the problem because someone who actively disagreed with me went to someone that agreed with them and said, hey, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I always like that uh, boxing match metaphor. <laughs> Because, I mean, you can get really beat up in a boxing match. Yep. Hence why I only do them verbally. Well, I mean, it's like, I mean, like, two people could be having a boxing match, and it's like, they will beat each other up to the point where, like, they could be, like, bleeding. Or they'll have, like, really bad welts. But then it's like, they'll just, uh, be, they'll, they'll just come out at the end of the boxing match and be like, hey, bro, what's up? Not much. What's up with you? I'm all right. Because those- I mean, it's like playing Mario Kart. You hate each other while you're playing it, but no, no. What I mean is like those welts and those bl- and that bleeding is superficial. It'll heal. It'll heal over. And it was it was something they both accepted when they went into the fight. Oh, true, true. Yeah. It's like when it comes to this kind of discussion, it's like we, we accept that going in. Like, yeah, uh, most opinions are subjective. We accept that going in. We're going to go in with the assumption that, like, we're just going to presume they're not. So why even bring it up in the discussion? And that's why, like. Like, I pointed out to people, like, why bring that up? We knew that walking into this. Uh, we had someone, uh, I can't remember the name, but I think it started with a K. Uh, they were, we were, they were in the patron call and we were just sort of talking about, we were, we were all talking about something back and forth. This guy goes on a prolonged rant, just cuts through the middle about how, you know, it's all opinions and it's all okay to just have different opinions. And I actually muted him. I server, I muted him server wide and just said, bro. We know this. Don't be a condescending little shit in the patron call. This was some good tea to just spill and soak ourselves in like a really sticky hot tub. This video was brought to you by Lipton. <laughs> uh, <laughs> buy it at your lo- buy it at your local Walmart, Target, Kroger, or Whole Foods if you can afford it. Bless you, uh, cause you the you the real ones for people who can afford Whole Foods. Uh, yeah. I wonder. I, I wonder if I. I wonder if I can convince Lizzie to do a thumbnail of like the two of us just sat in a hot tub of tea. Oh Lord. <laughs> just have the tea, the tea, just have the, um, that would be great. What, what's that? I don't, I don't actually like, Oh, expose. I don't actually drink tea. What's that thing that you put in the teacup? Um, cream and sugar. No, 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 no. The, 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 the bag, uh, the tea bag. Oh, okay. But Hey, Lizzie's up for it. Shit. Just, hey, Lizzie, can you draw the two of us sat in a hot tub of that is just full of tea? It's like, what, what, are you in swimsuits? No, we're just both fully clothed just because. Yeah, my, my hoodie is waterproof. My hoodie is tea-proof. We both get in a hot tub just fully clothed and we'll just, we can, we can add Lizzie and Zane stood behind us just like, what? (laughs) I don't know. May- maybe if I can convince her to do maybe, that. Maybe maybe add Kevin for good measure. Yeah, maybe add Kevin. Add Kevin and Billy for good measure. Oh God. <laughs> Kevin and Billy crossover coming summer 2018. Oh God. <laughs>